about a week ago I was shooting 3D with my cousins and they had some questions about my release. How does that thing go off? How do you use it? And why do you use it? So it kind of got me thinking. There's a lot of folks that don't understand all the different types of releases that bow hunters and tournament archers use. So I figured I'd just run through them with you guys real quick. Uh, the very first thing, pretty obvious here, this is a finger glove. Everybody who's ever drawn a bow has drawn it with fingers. It's the first thing you do as a kid when you draw a bow back. Uh, these things just simply make it to where the string doesn't tear your fingers up. If you're shooting quite a bit of poundage, it can, it can dig into the fingers after a day of shooting and wear them out. So finger glove, they also make a finger tab, which is just a small piece of leather that fits on your fingers. Your, ring, or your middle finger slides through this, this little hole in the tab and it guards your fingers. So obviously that one's pretty obvious. The next release, probably the most widely used release, is a caliper style release. Now what this does is it straps to your wrist. You either have Velcro or a buckle. This one is a buckle. And all it does is strap on. They're usually triggered by your index finger. And you will lock that onto the string, draw your bow back, I'll actually show you guys here. By the way, real quick, I'm gonna cut off to something else. A boot lace makes a really good practice tool for a release. Uh, they cost hardly anything. You can just grab an old one, get it tied close to your draw length, hook your release to it. You can get the feel for several different types of releases. But a caliper style, you relax. The way you should properly trigger one of these is you just hook your finger around it and you want to engage the rhomboid muscles in your back. So you're pushing and pulling through the shot. You don't actually want to squeeze with your finger and you just move through tightening those muscles until the release triggers itself. That's how you properly shoot one of these and they're extremely accurate if you shoot them properly. The only problem with them is they are prone to some form issues. A lot of guys have seen folks get this thing back and just hammer that trigger a lot of times it gets abused, then your accuracy goes way down because you're anticipating the shot. And anytime you're anticipating the bow going off, you're moving, whether you know it or not. And a little bit of movement makes a big miss. So caliper style release, very common, very accurate, great release for bow hunters. Uh, just make sure you're using it correctly. The third style release that is very common now and getting more common is a thumb style handheld release. Uh, I got to grab my string real quick. But the way that works is there's a trigger here on the thumb. The hook for the string is right here. Same way as before, you hook it onto your bow string, you draw your bow back, you anchor, you rest your thumb on the trigger. Again, pressure in the back, pulling yourself through the shot, bow goes off. You don't want to manipulate the trigger on any release. If you do, if you're actively pulling the trigger, you're not going to be as accurate as you could be. Handheld releases are really good because you still can trigger if you absolutely have to when you're hunting. Sometimes you're in a situation where you can't take all the time in the world and you have to hurry through your shot a little bit. So you have a little more control over your trigger. The reason they tend to be a little more accurate than a caliper release for most folks is because your thumb doesn't have as much dexterity. It doesn't train as easily as an index finger, so you're less likely to punch this as you are an index finger. Folks still punch these. I see these misused a lot. So it's a great release. Ex again, can be extremely accurate. A lot of tournament archers use it. Just make sure when you wrap your thumb around this thing, you're not manipulating the trigger. You want to pull through the shot. And if you're putting pressure through the shot, pushing and pulling through the shot, your body will pull through this trigger. It'll go off without you anticipating it you're going to be really accurate. Again, my string flew off. That's one thing, guys, when you're practicing with your bootlegs. If you have a nice, relaxed hand at full draw and the bow goes and the release goes off smoothly, that string will fly off because you're not anticipating it and you're not grabbing the string. So that's a good sign. It's a little annoying when you got to go grab it every time you shoot, though. All right. Fourth style release. This is what I use exclusively for target shooting. Um, it is a hinge style release. 
Now the way this works, there's not a trigger on a hinge release at all. So what you have, you have a thumb peg here, and what that actually does is just gives you the leverage to draw your bow back. The way this fires, uh, I'm going to see if you can see this, there is a little half moon. There's a small metal half moon, and then on this, you can see there's this small metal piece that rests on that half moon. When you release it like this, weight on the hook places pressure on the half moon, and then as the release rotates, that little piece that we're talking about will click into a spot that, that warns you that you're right to the edge of the trigger, and as you pull through your shot, like we discussed on the other releases, it'll rotate off of that moon, and your bow will fire. Scary thing about these, no trigger. So a lot of folks are terrified by a hinge release. It's not difficult to use. You just have to, I would take some practice for sure with a boot lace uh, or a very low poundage bow at first and always draw it to your chest. So you draw to your chest with your weight, the weight of the bow on this thumb peg. This keeps the release from rotating through. Draw with that thumb peg, anchor, take your finger off of the peg, relax. It'll come into position, it'll click. And when it's in position, just pull through your shot like we mentioned, bow fires. Extremely accurate because you do not anticipate the shot with one of these. Um, they're very, very rarely abused. Folks do figure out a way to manipulate them, um, but it's a lot harder to do, a lot less common. It keeps you very consistent. I recommend one, I think a lot of folks should have one if you're serious with your compound, just really to practice with if nothing else at all. And what it does is it, it just teaches you how to go through that good shot. So you consistently feel that nice pull through shot. Then when you go back to your trigger release and your bow hunting, you know what that feels like. And if you know what a good shot feels like and you can repeat it every time, you're gonna see your accuracy go way up. So these are the only releases I have, but there is another style. Uh, it's called a back tension release. A lot of folks call a hinge a back tension because you do tend to fire it with back tension. However, it's not a true back tension. Um, a true back tension has a spring weight inside of it that you can set for a certain poundage. So say at full draw, your bow holds 16 pounds. What you would wanna do, there's an adjustment screw where you can set that thing to fire at 17 pounds. It has a trigger that you hold, you draw the bow, that's the safety feature. When you let off of the safety feature, you start pulling through your shot. And when your bow's poundage goes up, that next pound, the bow fires. Uh, a true back tension, I've, I've never even really played with one. I've seen folks use them. Uh, I'm sure that they can be quite accurate. The only thing that I've seen folks run into with those is sometimes they'll be pulling left and right a little bit because they're really, they're, they're pulling into their bow different ways. And sometimes folks have a hard time firing them and that's because they don't keep consistent pressure in their front arm and they're not getting the proper weight when they're pulling through the bow. So just to recap guys, again, you got your four types of releases. You got fingered, you got caliper style, you got a thumb button handheld, and you have hinge and then back tension. Uh, as far as what's best for you, <clears throat> again, most bow hunters, a caliper style release is really good. I do recommend you get a decent caliper style. If you buy a $20 release, just know you're going to have a lot of trigger movement. And when you have a lot of trigger movement, you're anticipating the shot. If you have one that's real crisp like this, it doesn't move at all. It just pops. It's on a sear. So you can see it doesn't creep at all. It just pops off. That's more accurate than one that's going to move because you're less likely to anticipate the shot. So just get a decent caliper. Bow hunters, this is awesome. Uh, also good for bow hunters is a thumb button. I see a lot of folks have them where they'll actually have a closed loop. They can hook on their D loop, just hangs on their bow the whole time. Those are awesome. Um, <clears throat> for me, it's just something that I could lose. So I like to strap one on my wrist, but you see a lot of folks nowadays taking these up for both tournament and bow hunting. The hinge, you can bow hunt with a hinge. Just know that sometimes you could potentially miss an opportunity if it's a really quick run through, stop the deer. You can't manipulate the release to get through the shot. Um, most of the time you don't need to do that, so a hinge would be fine. 
It's just a little more cumbersome. You've got some weird angles. Uh, it's probably not the best thing for a bow hunter, but it's sure accurate. Uh, and folks do use them for bow hunting. Last deal, I'll wrap this up. Get you a boot lace and practice. Whatever release you have, just sit there. I used to do this for hours and hours. I've slacked off now, I should continue to do it. But I would just say, every day, every day you're sitting in the chair watching TV, go get your release, hook into your boot lace, and just feel what a good shot feels like. Just do it over and over and over. And what you'll find is, the next time you shoot your bow, you're super comfortable, uh, you don't have target panic, you're not punching the trigger, uh, you just know what a good shot feels like, you're going to see your accuracy go way up. Thank you guys for watching. If you have anything else you want to see, just let me know. Uh, like, share, subscribe if you don't mind, and I appreciate it. Thank you.